Good evening and welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church on this Ash Wednesday um, as we gather together um, for the beginning of the season of Lent, this penitential season, this uh, season of, of looking in upon ourselves and seeing that we are, are sinful people in need of a Savior um, and that Savior has come, that Savior has come, we just celebrated that coming um, and now we are going to celebrate um, and, and prepare ourselves um, for his death and for his resurrection. Um, and so that begins tonight with, with the beginning of Lent in Ash Wednesday. Um, the order of service will be provided for you right there on your screen. As always, we want to encourage you to worship along with us by, by singing the hymns, by joining in for the prayers, the readings, the liturgy, um, and just uh, joining us, just as if you were sitting in one of these pews here tonight. Uh, secondly, um, as always, say hello to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who are joining online with you right now. Uh, there's a number of folks that are, are joining together with us. Um, share the peace of the Lord with them. Uh, share prayer concerns with each other. Um, you are the body of Christ, even though you're not with us here in person uh, we love you, we care for you, um, and, and so reach out to one another as brothers and sisters. Um, that's it for our pre-service stuff tonight. Uh, let's begin with our opening hymn. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait 
all the day long. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day, the church begins the holy season, the prayerful and penitential season of Lent, a season of reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a special time of devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance, born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently in God's word and draws from his life and his hope. Let us pray together then this evening that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, would richly bless us during this Lenten tide, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast with all sincerity and truth. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises that you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to grant unto us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins in thought, word, and deed, with which I have offended you. By nature I am sinful and unclean. Time and again I have not responded to your call to return to you and to walk in your ways. Although I justly deserve your punishment in time and for eternity, I am truly sorry for my transgressions and sincerely repent of them. In your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, forgive me all my sins, and by the working of the Holy Spirit, direct me to walk in your loving ways. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this Ash Wednesday 
comes from the second chapter of the prophet Joel, beginning at verse 12. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a, symbol, a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing in infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this evening will come from Psalm chapter 51 and will be spoken responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words, and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. The epistle lesson this evening comes from chapters 5 and 6, of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, 
as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together, let us confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace and peace to you from our Savior Jesus Christ, this day and always. Amen. Return to the Lord. This is going to be the cry. This is going to be the command that will serve as the pulse for worship and our focus throughout this season of Lent. A very simple word, return. As we launch this series tonight, uh, Return to the Lord, we are first going to hear from the prophet Joel. And we're going to hear God's invitation through his prophet. And as we look at this Old Testament reading, we are going to get ourselves situated, orientated, if you will, for this season and where God is going to lead us throughout this season of Lent. Tonight, as we look at the Old Testament lesson, we see here that it highlights for us the problem, but then also lays out the solution, all of its beauty, and in such a simple way. God calling us to just simply return, return to him because he is the one who will address our needs and provide for our salvation. Tonight, we are going to uh, do a little bit of time traveling, if you will. I want you to think about um, Israel, ancient Israel, especially this time in which the prophet Joel finds himself, in order that we can get a better idea of the people to which he is speaking. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Joel. We do know that he's a prophet, of course, and he's likely ministering in the southern kingdom of Judah. The book here is fairly short, only 73 verses covering three separate chapters. But the content is certainly rich and deep and complex. For us, the jumping off point, the, the important thing to kind of remember here is that Joel is coming in the midst of a plague that either has happened or is about to strike Israel. No doubt, the event is not only something that could possibly have happened, although perhaps it's figurative, it serves as a foreshadowing for the coming day of the Lord. Now, we don't really know here whether I said it's figurative or it, it's literal, but that really doesn't matter. The focus of Joel's message is straightforward and simple. A day of judgment is coming. And Joel is, has been sent by God to plead to these people, to beg these people to turn back to God, return to him, so that they might become and be seen as righteous on that day. Now, Joel's prophecy throughout the entire book is actually rather simple. First, there is this plague of locusts that is going to destroy all of the vegetation and Joel calls on the people to, to fast at the temple and then to offer a prayer of lament over the destruction that is coming. He then, secondly, turns his attention to this coming day of the Lord, telling the people that it is near and it is going to happen. He describes the Lord's army using this imagery of the destroying locusts and calls upon the people to return to the Lord, to fast and to pray. And then thirdly, God responds. Not only does God respond to this locust outbreak, bringing healing and restoration to the people, but he responds on the day of the Lord, giving salvation to those who call upon his name and passing judgment to the worldly folks who have played fast and loose with God's chosen people. And today, the reading is in the middle of that. In the middle of the book, in the middle of this prophecy, just after the swarm of locusts and the imagery that, that surrounds that, just after the comparison to the Lord's army and the coming day of the Lord, after that has been made, we are kind of left wondering as the reader, well, what can be done about this? Kind of what next? 
It, it reminds me a lot of the scene from the rich young man who comes and approaches Jesus. And remember what he asks. He says, uh, what must I do? What good thing must I do in order to receive eternal life? And do you remember what Jesus tells that young man? He says, sell all of your possessions and give it all to the poor. Sell all of your possessions and give it to the poor. And the young man goes away sad. Jesus then turns to his disciples and explains how difficult it can be for someone with everything, with wealth, to enter the kingdom of heaven. And how did the, how did the disciples respond? Can you recall how they respond? They ask a question. Well, then who can be saved? Who can be saved? You can almost hear the people during Joel's time asking this very same thing after what they have just heard. Well, who then can be saved? If all of this is going on, and if the day of the Lord is coming, and all of this destruction and all of this judgment is coming with it, who can be saved? But Joel comes and brings to them good news. And he brings with him a promise. He says this, It shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The people only needed to return to the Lord their God. Because he is gracious. He is merciful. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. You know, all these people had to do was stop trusting in themselves and start trusting in God. All they needed to realize was that they themselves could not stop the swarming locusts. And neither would they be able to stop the impending judgment day. But those words aren't just for the Israelites. Yes, the day was going to come. Yes, all people are going to be affected. Yes, they need to return to the Lord. But those words are not just for the Israelites. Because maybe, just maybe, and I think it, it is true. In fact, I would say almost certainly it is. Maybe you are facing a swarm of locusts that threatens to completely destroy you. There's no question, I think, that we all are. Those small, seemingly inconspicuous things that kind of eat away at us. Each one of them doing just a little bit of damage, but they add up. And they become a destructive force that decimates everything good in its path. Your sin is your locusts. And while, yes, maybe one locust or one little sin doesn't seem all that terrifying. When the entire list of your deeds is considered, well, it's absolutely breathtaking. It's terrifying. You know, if truly the wages of sin is death, as Paul writes, and if, as Ezekiel says, the soul who sins shall die, well then, when we think about ourselves and all of our sins... This swarm of locusts is perhaps more frightening than we first realized. Joel's words, they should hit us to the very core. They should pierce our heart. The day of the Lord will come. And it's, with it is going to come immense destruction and terror. There's no way to escape it. There's no way around it. The time is going to come. And so we think about the times that we sought revenge on someone because they had wronged us or they did something that hurt us. Or the times when you coveted your neighbor's property. The time when you spoke ill of your sibling. The time when you helped yourself to some of those supplies at work because, well, you figured they owed it to you. The time when you lusted after the woman who was across the room, be it at the bank or the grocery store. The time when you lost your temper and you screamed at that man or that woman for driving too slow or too fast. 
the time when you treated your father with contempt, or perhaps you dismissed your father because you didn't think she knew, you, your mother because you didn't think she knew what she was talking about. Or when you blew off worship because, well, worship is boring. Or when you strung together that, that slew of curse words and it would make even a trucker blush. Or maybe when you decided that you knew better than God about, well, everything. Those are the swarms of locusts. And those swarm of locusts, when we think about them, when we realize that we have them in our lives, and that eternal death and damnation follow them, they should absolutely terrify you. But Joel brings good news for us also. He brings a simple promise to you as well. It shall come to pass that everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Brothers and sisters in Christ, return to the Lord. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He is the one who relents over disaster. And regardless, regardless of your sinful rejection of God, regardless of the locusts in your life, regardless of the, 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 the poor judgment that you've had, regardless of the temptation that you have given yourselves into, regardless of the sin that infects you from within, God invites you. God invites you today and tomorrow and every day to return to him, and he promises that he will bless you. So guess what? Stop right now. Stop trusting in yourself and start trusting in God. Because you cannot, no matter what you think you can do, you cannot stop the swarming locusts of your sin. And you cannot stop the day of judgment. It will, be, it will come. You will be affected. The only solution is to return to the Lord. As we continue throughout this Lenten season, we are going to gather together and we're going to listen to God's call as we return to him because he is gracious and he is merciful. He is slow to anger. He does abound in steadfast love. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. During this uh, time of Lent, um, should you desire to make a, um, a midweek offering, um, you can do that just how you would uh, for a Sunday morning. You can uh, mail it here to the church office or drop it off. You can go online and give as a one-time gift or a recurring gift through our website. Or you can even text the word GIVE, that's G-I-V-E, to 989-309-2496. Again, thank you so much um, for your faithfulness in your giving and for giving um, not out of obligation, but with a cheerful heart, knowing that God is going to bless that gift for the sake of his kingdom uh, and that the gospel may be, be, may be carried forward from this place. Uh, that being said, let us uh, go to our Father in heaven now with the singing of our offertory.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptation of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work of the Lord that he has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and peace, and for those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose hope but rely on God's promise that he will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they may always remember the giver of every gift and give him heartfelt thanks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. These and any other things that you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gracious and merciful Father, you call your people to return, and you forgive the sins of all who come to you with penitent and contrite hearts. Grant us the spirit of true repentance to acknowledge our sins and to find in you forgiveness and restoration, wholeness and peace. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We close with our final hymn. She
sheep that from the fold did stray, no true shepherd e'er forsaketh. Weary souls that lost their way, Christ the shepherd gently taketh in his arms that they may live. Jesus, sinners, doth receive. I, a sinner, come to thee with a penitent confession. Savior, mercy show to joining us on this Ash Wednesday evening. Um, just one announcement. Um, next Wednesday and in the, uh, the Wednesdays to follow throughout this season of Lent, uh, we are going to continue with this theme on return to the Lord. And we will be meeting in person and online both at 6 p.m. We would love for you to join us in one of those two uh, fashions. Um, for those that are joining in person, we've had some, some individuals asking about soup suppers and those kinds of things. At this point, we are holding off. Um, however, we are going to look at that uh, possibly for March. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.